Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today to talk about three steps that you can take to secure remote workers and students. I'm Meg Diaz and I'm on the cloud security team at Cisco. Um, so I'm gonna be leading you through this. If you do have questions throughout, feel free to type them into the Q&A panel and we'll try to take some at the end if possible. Now, this is probably a pretty familiar scene for many of you nowadays. We have more people working from home at a global scale than ever before. And it's probably a bit overwhelming for many different reasons. And that's probably the uh, understatement of the year too. Many companies are, are kind of first figuring out, you know, how to enable all of their users to work remotely, right? Getting everybody laptops or other types of tablets or mobile devices. And that includes school districts too, right? In, in some schools, students already had Chromebook devices or other tablets to use as part of their regular curriculum, but others are figuring out now how to continue the learning and the lesson, lesson plans outside of the classroom. And then even once you have your user set up with devices, the next immediate concern is how to actually secure them now that they are working outside of the office or school. And given the new reality that we're all in, there are some really important reasons why security is a, a top concern right now. Unfortunately, attackers are always looking for ways to exploit vulnerable situations, and this is no exception. We've seen some interesting trends from our global cloud infrastructure over the past several weeks. Now, um, at, at Cisco, every day we resolve more than 200 billion DNS requests on our cloud infrastructure. And this is coming from enterprise and consumer users worldwide across more than 190 different countries. So this gives us actually a really unique view into trends in traffic and threats across the world. Looking at some of those recent trends across that traffic, we've actually seen a 3.5 increase, X increase in malware traffic. And that includes a whole host of different types of malware. Um, when we looked at ransomware in particular, we've seen a 100% increase in that over the past few weeks. With phishing attacks, we've seen a 1.7X increase in activity and a 2.5x increase in command and control callbacks to botnets. So clearly there's a lot that's, that's happening right now on, on that front. On top of that, even if you do require your employees to connect to a VPN to access internal resources and, and other sites, it doesn't mean they are always using it. ESG uh, did a survey last year and found that organizations who had a VPN policy in place found that 85% of users were sometimes or frequently bypassing it. And I've heard, you know, even before this, many organizations saying that they, they tended to see a, a, a spike in infected machines on their corporate network on Monday mornings, of all things, right? And that's because that's when everybody connects back after using their work computer for personal use on the weekends, right? And I think Mondays are, are tough enough without dealing with a bunch of infected machines too. Um, but with more workers now working remotely, they're likely skipping the VPN at times too. And whether it's accidental because they just forgot to connect or if they had to disconnect due to bandwidth restrictions or other reasons, there's a higher chance that they'll get infected without additional protection on their laptop. And then when you think about the, the different networks that they might be connecting to now, right? Your users probably have varying degrees of security on their home Wi-Fi networks. So if they're connecting to their home Wi-Fi and working without connecting to the VPN, then they're gonna be more vulnerable to different types of threats. Now, one, one tip that you could use it to help your employees keep their home network safe for kids, you could um, also check out the OpenDNS home network offers. So we have um, here several free package options, other options for additional security protection around $20 per user per year. So you can see the OpenDNS home is kind of the, the classic free service where you can do customizable content filtering. So parental controls and some basic protections and then Family Shield and, and Home VPN offer some, some variations on that. 
And then OpenDNS Umbrella Prosumer gives you kind of the more security options and it's, it's uh, available for personal laptops uh, for one to five users with three devices per user that can be protected. So a few different options for, you know, just helping to secure that home network a bit more. Now, getting back to helping you with your employees, when you're thinking about security for your remote workers right now, there's probably some key things that you're looking for, right? First of all, you know that since your, your users won't always be on a protected network, you need security that's going to follow them anywhere that they go on whatever network they connect to. And it has to be something that isn't going to impact their work or be something that they have to remember to turn on. For you, it has to be something that's easy to deploy, right? You or your team has to be able to deploy it from wherever you are right now, most likely using the tools that you already have at your disposal. And you also need it to be something that's not going to take a lot of overhead to manage, right? So no manual upgrades or maintenance that you have to constantly stay on top of or appliances that you have to set up and maintain. And of course, you want it to be something that's going to be effective in protecting your users against the wide variety of threats that are, are out there. Because ultimately, the better that you can protect them, the fewer incidents and alerts for your security team to chase down. And so that's where Cisco Umbrella comes in. So Umbrella can help you check off all of these boxes. And what Umbrella is, so it's a cloud-delivered security service, and it combines multiple security functions into a single cloud service. So that includes DNS security, secure web gateway, firewall, and CASB functionality. And we even give you access to all of our threat intelligence to help with incident investigation. Now, given the limited time that you probably have right now, the fastest way that you can get started is with DNS layer security. Now, this can provide the first line of defense against threats in the internet. So anytime that you click a link or type a URL, the first step that happens is a DNS request to connect the IP address with that requested domain. And that's really the perfect place to enforce security. So if the domain or IP address is known to be malicious or associated with some sort of nefarious activity, users will then be safely routed to a block page instead. And the reason that this is so useful is that DNS is the, you know, the first step in all of those internet connections, and it's used by nearly all devices. So because of this, adding security at the DNS layer allows you to block threats earlier before a connection to your network or endpoint is ever made. And the other thing is that DNS is used quite frequently in attacks. There was um, some research done a, a year or so, a couple years ago, that found about 90% of malware uses DNS at some point in the process. But it's also something that's often not monitored or uh, used for security. So it's a great layer of protection to have. Now let's start talking a bit about uh, how you can actually get started with this. So the first step is to sign up for access to Umbrella. So if you go to signup.umbrella.com, you'll have some fields that you fill out and you'll receive an email that has instructions on how to activate and get started. Um, there's no credit card or anything that's needed. You'll just get that email, follow the steps, and you can get started. You'll see um, here the, the standard trial length is 14 days, but we can help you extend beyond that trial period too. Next, you'll need to figure out the deployment plan for your organization. So you can deploy Umbrella across your corporate network. So I'll talk about that option briefly. Um, and really, depending on how your network is set up, you can use your existing um, DNS or DHCP servers, routers, wireless access points. We, have a, we also have a number of uh, built-in integrations across um, Cisco and partner devices to also help make that deployment easier. So that's kind of the on-network options that we'll talk about. And then off-network, right? There are several different options for deploying to laptops and, and mobile devices. So we'll talk today about how you can deploy to Windows or Mac machines, Apple iOS devices, and Chromebook. We also have a client for Android devices that's currently in limited availability. So I'm not gonna cover that today. 
um, but reach out to your Cisco account manager if that's something of interest to you. Okay, so we're gonna get started talking about on-network deployments first. So if you have DNS or DHCP servers on your networks or, or wireless, wireless access points, all you have to do is just update the settings to point your internet traffic to the IP address of Umbrella's cloud network. So you see there, um, we have two IP addresses, 208.67.222.222 is one. And um, really then every device that connects to your network through the VPN or other means will be automatically protected to Umbrella, right? Because we're just routing all the traffic to Umbrella and you can enforce the security protection. The great thing about this, the way that we've set up our, our cloud infrastructure, you don't need to connect to a specific data center in our infrastructure. We use Anycast routing, so users will automatically be connected to the fastest data center to handle their request. And keep in mind, this single IP change will forward only the external DNS traffic to the umbrella network. So we, we're not gonna replace or impact any of your internal DNS resolutions. This is all for outbound to the, the internet. You also have several additional deployment options that can provide more granularity for administration, right? So specifically for policies and reporting. So I'm not gonna get into those details today, but we have plenty of resources to help you with that um, on our, our documentation site. And like I mentioned earlier, you can also provision using other Cisco or partner devices, including wireless access points and routers. So now let's talk a little bit more about the off-network deployment options. So for off-network coverage, if you use Cisco AnyConnect already, uh, version 4.3 or later, then there's no additional endpoint agent that you have to deploy. All you have to do is enable the umbrella roaming security module. And basically the module ensures that whenever the user is disconnected from the corporate network, those requests are still going to the umbrella cloud for inspection. And you can also set up different policies for users, whether they are on or off the network. If you don't use AnyConnect, then we have a lightweight client that works alongside any VPN client that you have. And it basically just ensures that the DNS requests still go to Umbrella. So we call it the Umbrella Roaming Client. Um, and it basically includes the ability to deliver granular policy enforcement and reporting information about the specific computer identity or even the logged in Active Directory user. So you can see which user and device actually sent the DNS request. Um, the, roaming client, the roaming client will actually forward requests for external domains to Umbrella, and we, what we do is actually embed a unique identifier that matches the device's host name and also uh, encrypts the DNS request to prevent any man-in-the-middle uh, eavesdropping that could happen on public networks. And then for internal domains, you can create an internal um, domain so that your roaming users can still access your network's local resources um, on any internally hosted domains that, uh, that rely on some of those uh, local DNS servers. So all you have to do here to get started is to download the client um, and then follow the, the wizard for setup. And then for mass deployment, um, you can use tools like group policy objects, Apple remote desktops, or other tools for those you know, more automated uh, software installations. Um, so moving on to the next one, if you use Apple devices, so if you have enterprise iOS devices that run in supervised mode, you can deploy the Cisco Security Connector using an MDM and enable the Umbrella app extension. Um, so what will happen is all app or user initiated network requests will be intercepted by the Umbrella app extension, and then they will be forwarded and resolved by Umbrella, so any of those external internet requests. Um, if there's internet domain requests, those will be forwarded and, and resolved by the local DNS server. But in real time, these, uh, these requests will be reported in the Umbrella dashboard. And the great thing is that it's also a zero-touch user experience for your end users. Um, 
in terms of the basic requirements you'll see on the, the right there, but it does have to be an enterprise-owned iOS device that's run in supervised mode. That allows us to get down to the level of, of uh, detail that's needed to drive this sort of um, enforcement. All right, and then for Chromebook devices, we have the umbrella Chromebook client. And so that provides uh, same DNS layer protection on and off network. And we see this widely used by education customers, especially um, K through 12. And so this helps to provide protection from, you know, phishing, you can enforce content category filtering for, um, you know, the, the, the uh, Children's Internet Protection Act and other uh, content categories that we have available. And you can get, um, you know, policy-based protection uh, wherever that user goes. And it provides a way to identify which user actually sent the DNS request, similar to all the other mechanisms that we talked about. And you can uh, set granular control and visibility for all the activity that's happening with your Chromebook users. So the way that it works, the Umbrella Chromebook client uh, can be deployed using a Chrome extension and application that are available on the Chrome web store. And then once it's actually deployed, when a user enters a URL into the Chromebook browser, the client extension basically copies the domain name from the URL and send it, sends it to the, uh, the Chromebook client app. The app then creates an eDNS query and then sends the DNS request, including that uh, eDNS information, to the umbrella resolver. And then um, depending on the policies that you've set up, to, to, uh, it'll be um, applied. So the resolver will basically respond either blocking or allowing that request to happen. So that gives you um, a quick overview of the different deployment options that are available. Um, let's move on to the third step here. So you can also, um, you know, step, the step three is really configuring and setting up policies. So you can do this for different groups of users and devices. Here's an example where you can see uh, different policies set up for Chromebook, other mobile devices, certain types of applications. You know, you can even see specific policies for when users are off the corporate network, right? So this might be when you have users who are at home on their own time, you might not care about enforcing content filtering policies, like restricting access to gambling or social media sites. Um, so what you can do is actually have a policy that just enforces our security categories instead of being, you know, uh, protect other content categories. So there's a lot of flexibility that you have there. There's also a policy wizard that walks you through the steps to set up the policy. So what you see here is a summary view. Um, and so you'll set up policies based on which user and devices you want the policy to be applied to, which security settings and content category settings you want to enforce. You can say if there are any destinations that should be whitelisted and so on. Um, you can even create custom block pages that users will see so you can actually educate them more about why they are being blocked from certain sites. Um, so those are really the three main steps that you have to start protecting your remote workers. And then just one more thing. Once you're done, now you can reward yourself with a refreshing beverage of your choice. So just to summarize a few points, um, and let's talk about what's really in it for you. First of all, the ability to deploy protection in minutes from wherever you're working right now. Um, this is a quote that you can see from Avanade. So they had a, a big population of consultants who were constantly on the road. And they deployed Umbrella to all of their laptops a few years ago. So you can see a, a quote here from Joseph, um, who is the senior director of IT infrastructure over there, um, just about you know, how easy that deployment actually was for him. Even at Cisco, um, a couple of years ago, when they first deployed Cisco Umbrella, um, our IT team enabled the Umbrella roaming module on AnyConnect, and they were able to have about 78,000 feet installed within a week and about 100,000 installed within two weeks. 
Now, one of the best parts that they had reported, and there's, there's a case study where you can see more, is they only had three installation related cases that came out of it. So, um, that's obviously an important where you don't want to be dealing with a ton of issues right now. All right, so next, once you deploy, you want to make sure that you are seeing value very quickly too. In a survey of our customers, about 50% reported that they saw value in less than a day. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that Umbrella will block a lot of bad stuff for you, and it will do it at the earliest possible point, which then often reduces the alerts that you see in your antivirus, firewall, or other systems that your team has to often chase down. And it's not just about stopping it sooner, but it's also the efficacy around how much and what is being blocked. Uh, so I didn't talk a lot about this yet, but it, um, Umbrella gets its intelligence from Cisco Talos, uh, which has more than 300 security researchers and is one of the largest commercial threat intelligence teams. Additionally, I talked earlier about the amount of traffic that we see across the Umbrella cloud infrastructure every day, more than 200 billion DNS requests. Well, we take all of that data and we apply statistical and machine learning models against it. And by doing that, we can actually uncover connections between URLs, domains, IPs, and even malware files. And we can see attackers setting up infrastructure before they even launch attacks. So it's a really powerful combination of intelligence that you have behind you too. And to give you a quick proof point of that, so AV test um, actually recently did a research study comparing Cisco Umbrella to other vendors in the market. And we placed first in threat detection there. So if you wanna check out the full report, you can see it on our, our website for more details. And finally, um, Umbrella often improves internet performance for you too, which is not something that you typically expect when deploying a security product. And that's really because of how uh, our cloud infrastructure was deployed. And we have more than 32 data centers worldwide located at the largest ISPs and CDM. And so we're not just located in the same places, but we have more than 900 partnerships and 9,000 uh, peering sessions with them. And that helps us make sure that we are routing the requests the fastest way possible. And because of where we enforce security at the DNS layer, it's going to enforce that security without adding additional latency. So that's a quick review of how you can get started protecting your remote workers with Cisco Umbrella. Um, I really focused today on the DNS security because that's, that's really the fastest way that you can get going. But you can also deploy our secure gateway capabilities for deeper web controls and some of the other services in Umbrella as well. So three uh, key resources that I included here for you. For more information in general, check out umbrella.cisco.com. Again, to get started with the product, visit signup.umbrella.com and you can get started right away. And then you can use docs.umbrella.com for more technical deployment guides. Um, so digging deeper into the uh, deployment options that I covered. So with that, we can move over and answer a couple of questions. I know that we've been answering some as, as we've been going along. So let me see. Um, so there's some questions in here around how is this licensed uh, by devices? Um, so the answer to that, so it is actually licensed by users. So with Umbrella, uh, you know, it, it's not, we, we don't really care how many devices a particular user has. So it's typically licensed uh, based on the number of users in your, um, in your organization. Um, there's also some uh, different options for um, uh, uh, for education customers, there are some different options uh, for you know students as well from a uh, licensing and pricing perspective. Another question: um, I saw Cisco had a free security offering available right now. How can I get access to that? 
Um, yeah, so that's a, that's a great point. So uh, Cisco did announce a free security license uh, or licenses available for uh, three main security products. So uh, Umbrella, uh, the NA Connect uh, or VPN, and Duo, uh, which has a multi-factor authentication. So those are available. There's also an offer for um, video conferencing with WebEx. And the, the best way, so on the umbrella side, um, if you go to signup.umbrella.com and uh, fill in that information, um, once you get started, we'll be able to extend that, uh, that trial. So you'll be able to get that, that uh, security license. Um, and if you go to cisco.com, there is a message from Chuck Robbins, that our, our CEO, that brings you to a page with more detail about all of the offers. So those are kind of the, the two main places that you can get more information and, and get started. So with that, we're gonna wrap up for today, but I hope you and your families and employees stay healthy and safe, and, um, and we're here for you to help in any way possible. So thank you very much for joining. Take care.